all mother sentient beings, limitless as space, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and omniscience. May they experience happiness, be free from suffering, and swiftly may they attain precious, unsurpassed, perfectly complete enlightenment. All mother sentient beings, limitless as space, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and omniscience. May they experience happiness, be free from suffering, and swiftly may they attain precious, unsurpassed, perfectly complete enlightenment. <laughs> For that purpose, until I attain Buddhahood, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. Until death, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. From today until this time tomorrow, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. Okay, now offering mandala. Mandala, page number seven. Now we'll offer a mandala on page number seven. Oh, Lingen, Jender, Ramja, Jims, Ramja, Jims, Jing, Jorabezo, Malu, Loya, Landa, Berlana, Daniel, Rogo, Togi, Zonda, Zor, Dalu, Longio, and Doba, Jinji, Dampong. with four continents and the wealth of infinite oceans of realms. If I bring them all to mind and offer them without exception, please hold with compassion all the beings they contain. My body, enjoyments, and whatever I own, my aggregate elements and sense sources, my aspirations now and in times to come, as well as everything I grasp as mine, by offering them all, may I be blessed with the end of self-grasping, completely liberated from the bounds of real and unreal, transcending the names and concepts of arising, cessation, and abiding, coming and going, affirmation and denial. The supreme mandala is the natural state. By offering it, may I be blessed to attain the state of Buddhahood. <laughs> Now 
Namo, to the Guru, the utter purity of all appearance and existence, I offer all appearance and existence arisen as the primordial ground. I supplicate you, may the three realms be completely liberated. Please grant blessings to empty samsara from its depths. Lord, with five omniscient wisdoms, crown ornament, kind one with loving nature, precious protector of beings, heart of all Buddhas, inexpressible by words or thought. I supplicate you from the core of my mind. Bless me from within the state of dharmata. Bless me to realize this mind, primordially pure and unborn as unfathomable dharmakaya. Please turn the wheel of the Dharma according to the dispositions and mental capacities of sentient beings. ตะกะปะกัมดีล่ะเอ่อ <laughs> ที่ดูเกิดตรงตรงเดี๋ยวน่าจะตรงนี้สมบูรณ์เลยเอ่อที่ที่เจ้าแม่ว่าอย่างมาเลยที่จกขังยินน่าจะนี่ตาหมดส
so sorry. Um, so the cause are the negative karmas and the obscurations, and the negativities, the condition are the um, evil spirits and the hindrances, the obstructors, and the result is illness and suffering. So it is not that there is no cause. And so Guru Rinpoche had said in the um, Sambah Rundup, the spontaneous accomplishment of intentions, that in the last 500 years in times of degeneration, the five afflictive emotions of sentient beings are extremely coarse. Um, may these become exhausted from their mind streams. So the generation of time, there's different kinds of degenerations actually. There is a degeneration of the view, the degeneration of the um, individuals, and the degeneration of the Dharma and so forth. And so how has it become degenerate? So nowadays science is improving on the external level, but due to these developments, our inner uh, attachment and our greed is increasing and we are feeling a sense of covetousness, of wanting the happiness of others. So we cultivate desire and that this desire leads to jealousy and that leads to conflict between countries, between people, between friends. It is because the afflictive emotions are so strong. So they are so coarse. Um, so it is like an evil, like a vapor, a poison coming out from one's mouth, like poisonous, toxic. Um, so sentient beings experience this intense suffering, and actually the Buddhas of the past have spoken about this over and over again. They have spoken about their coming and an eon, a time of, you know, of illness, of disease, of weapons, and of famine. So also um, to pacify this, for this reason we recite the, the world peace and prayer. So the Buddhas have also always mentioned that, that this is going to happen. And so when it happens, what is it that we have to be careful about? This is a time where we have to remember karma, understand karma, and be very careful when it comes to karma. We have to be careful to, when it comes to the creation, the accumulation of um, causes. Um, so this is what the Buddhas of the past have um, many times in the past have mentioned already. Le Jacob's 
Hajang Chavichava, Hajang Tung, Hajang Nung. Nimari let him some digital took up Hajang Nung. Yeah, Lori, the Dari, Pinty Hajang Sabachiva, Tanjila, Telenjiva, Telishang Chavoj on the door, Lori. There was something just a moon machine. Till it tells the jet of the machine. The Mount Palan Jet of the many legend is someone that you are going to double judge a cartimbo in the This handy controls of the Jabby Dom machine. Oh, two hundred you see Dom did it. Dom Marte is on the road. Dung is doing it with your bones. Dung is my dad in the road. Dandy less on the new mobile department. Ye pig is sent to you. Ye pig is a tennis of you on a tea sober. The water to count the son I am. There are you. Tikola, shut the summer down. That's a sort of legacy, not to be called a summer summer. The Jim did show me by some semi devotion. Captain Tana Tata Carriage, or Nicky Jersey, Jim Satsavati, each of them at Jersey, as Tango Yoris. Tata Tante can carry it, don't need a chunk of Yoris. Oh, since here they are just that, no need to take it at the ま、<音楽><音楽><音楽> Oh, Somebody she looked at the unit of the Sambat and he saw what she was there. They were just that they were just chumming with the Sambat and he did chumming doom red, doubling some more time. That is nature, they could not have nature, the doctor didn't double him, simply is a beautiful thing. The lady she had done some trouble, last of my men, I did bundle with your head. There is some more than doing it just in the kitchen with your head. So now, temporarily, we experience a lot of suffering, and it seems that we are without um, protection when it comes to our suffering. But then, um, still, there is a way to achieve a positive result, and that depends on our altruism. So, actually, during these days, this is really a time where our trust in karma really can increase if we really think about karma. If you really think about karma and you're in the midst of this suffering, you see that nothing in this world can be a protection to you. Not your country, not any person, not your power, not your money, nothing. So it seems that everyone is completely without any protection, without any refuge. So at this, at this time, how should you think? Um, so think about different countries in the world. So are there some people, in fact, who are not affected ever by this kind of suffering? There are. There are some people who do not experience physical illness, some people who never experience mental misery. There's many people who never experience much difficulties. So then there's others who constantly experience suffering. It is said that if you have not created the karma, you will not encounter a result. So now 
what this should make you realize is that I have to find my refuge, my protection in the cause that I am creating. Um, so so you, you can understand the causes and the certain results when you look at a country, like the experience of certain countries and the people in a country. Even within a single country, not everyone has the same experience. Um, some are more affected, some are less affected by this suffering. Um, so what is the difference then really? Why is it that some cannot be protected? For example, even the president of a country catches the disease. So think about the causes and karma in this way and realize that I can't be protected. Being protected when it comes to the causes is most important. We always say, may beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. That is our common aspiration prayer. So what's the cause of happiness? It is love, love and compassion. That's the cause that the Buddha um, talked about. So now when you look at your own mind and also the minds of others, how much of that love and compassion do you have? Our love and compassion is extremely small. It is very limited. When you think about each and every day, how much love and compassion arises in your mind, it is very, very little. And then when you think about months and years, um, you see that um, very rarely does re a real thought of love and compassion arise. And mostly we are controlled by our afflictive emotions. We are angry, we are jealous and so forth. It's because we do not know how to hold on, how to recognize the cause of love and then how to hold on to that cause of love. So when you think about karma, you realize, I have to hold on to this. I have to hold on to this cause of happiness. And this is also what we remember when we take refuge in the sweet jewels. When we take a vow, um, then we, um, we regret any former transgressions and we uh, vow to not again repeat those negative actions. So it is said, all suffering without exception comes from wishing for one's own happiness. And um, that is self-grasping, the afflictive emotions. If you just cultivate altruism, a wish to help and benefit others for a moment, wherever you go in the six realms of samsara, there will be happiness. So think about this very carefully. Um, think about karma very carefully. So you come to an understanding that karma is really um, un unfailing. That has to arise in your mind very f firmly. And when that arises and you experience illness, you will recognize that this is because a cause, due to a cause that I have created. Once the cause is created, I must by all means experience the result. However, this experience of the result purifies this negative karma and thinking forward, you would then think about creating the causes for happiness in the future. So you cultivate love and compassion. So whatever difficulty you experience, whether you're ill or whatever suffering you have, also think that all mother sentient beings also experience such suffering. So when you direct your mind toward the suffering of other sentient beings, then your own suffering will appear much smaller um, in perspective. So it's very important to reflect on the suffering of other sentient beings, that your own suffering doesn't seem to be so great. Um, and so when, um, when suffering arises, um, um, so thinking this way um, and take a commitment thinking that with my body, speech and mind from now on I will practice virtue like we have said in our prayer. And what is virtue? Um, so virtue, whatever you do with body and speech, if it comes from a mind of love and compassion, it becomes virtuous. Um, so thinking in this way, in these ways, your trust in karma increases. Um, 
So and it doesn't matter which religion in the world you follow. Actually, there is no religion that does not consider love as most important. It is just that if we kind of mix this love with self-grasping, then one religion starts to harm another religion. And so in this way, it becomes like poison. Um, and so then within our hearts, um, like anger and jealousy and blaze like a fire. So that is something we really have to think about. The fault is just not in the religion, but in that um, we have not enough love and compassion in our mind stream. Um, so it is very important, the point here that is that it's very important to recognize the causes. で、Cap的 Double Nibala Tata Tell 
So at this time, um, um, still we have a great opportunity, and so that is, you no. Know, the Buddha had said you ha you must recognize um, suffering. So that feeling of suffering. Now, um, for example, when you think about the suffering of the lower realms. Um, but even just the suffering of what we can see, the humans and the animals who coexist. When you just think about the suffering of the animals, for example, then immediately you will recognize, actually our suffering as humans is really nothing in comparison to that. Then your own suffering already is so much lighter. Um, so um, to think in this way, especially in these days when you experience difficulties. Now, think that, um, the, of, think of the suffering of others and then think of um, the, the antidote to this suffering. And that is really the antidote to your own suffering is to 
um, look at others and think about them, think about their suffering. For, for example, when you think about the suffering of someone who you love very much, like your family or your friends, what kind of feeling arises in you? And so this is how the Buddha has felt, feels for all beings that exist. So the suffering comes to you and you feel the suffering of others. Um, so at that time, when you become aware of the suffering of others, then your own suffering will somewhat diminish um, because I mean, love and compassion arises. So look at the feeling that arises and then recognize that you know, through this feeling of love that arises, your, the karma of your own suffering becomes purified. And so if we do not purify our negative karmas, they will still remain. Even if hundreds of aeons pass, they will never become spoiled. They will have to ripen and thereby become purified. So when suffering arises, think about the suffering of others. So this is where the practice of Donglen comes in. That will surely be of great benefit. Um, and so then I um, think that um, we as human beings still experience much less suffering than an animal. Actually, our suffering is very small in comparison to that. Um, so think in this way. Um, so number one, think that the suffering is actually like a friend because it purifies the karma of birth in the lower realms. The suffering purifies negative karma. Number two, if you think about the suffering of others, then your own suffering becomes much lighter. For example, when you think about the suffering of the animals, then really our suffering is nothing compared to that. So in this way, you actually develop some, some courage inside. And then number three, um, Dzogchen Bardo Rinpoche had said, I um, do not um, prefer to be um, happy, I prefer to suffer, because um, when I suffer, I purify negative karmas. When I'm happy, the five poisons increase. So that is um, that actually suffering can become in itself a skillful means in this way. It just really depends on how you think about it. It's a way of um, thinking about it. Uh, so um, change your way of thinking. Whatever suffering arises, recognize um, where does it come from? It's because of the afflictive emotions. Where are they? They are within my own mind. I keep reinforcing them all the time. Um, so this is what you need to recognize in a moment of difficulty. You recognize the afflictive emotion associated to it. And then you apply the antidote, which is to cultivate love and compassion, which is to think about the suffering of others. So what is love? Um, first, you have to cultivate love for all sentient beings. That is, that you recognize first that all sentient beings really have been my parents. So a real feeling arises. Then when you really see them as your family and you think about their suffering, a real feeling arises. And from that, compassion arises. So that's really the starting point of cultivating love and compassion. And if you have that, then even if you just recite a single prayer, it will benefit all sentient beings. If you think about all of your suffering, then you are strengthening the self and your suffering only increases. And often what happens then is that people even turn away from the three jewels. Um, they turn away from their faith and they think that all of this supplicating and praying didn't help anything. Um, so then they just continue to follow their afflictive emotions and they accumulate more karma. And then that, of course, um, it, of course, if you keep accumulating karma and follow your afflictive emotions, then, of course, um, nothing is of any benefit. So what is of a true benefit is to remember the, the deity. And 
um, there's many different deities and there's many different um, gurus that follow or practice different deities. Um, but actually, there is no difference at all between any of the deities. It is not that one is better and the other one is worse. Because their wisdom beings, their mind, their enlightened mind is one and the same. Um, but then, um, depending on what Lama you have greatest faith in, greatest devotion in, um, uh, often we then follow, due to the practice lineage, the specific Yidam that this Lama um, also practices. And that is because, first of all, the Lama opens the doors of your mind to devotion. And then secondly, that having then generated devotion in your mind, um, the Lama then also gives you a deity to practice, um, which he himself has practiced, and therefore you are being transmitted the practice blessing lineage. And due to that, and then practicing this deity, um, thirdly, um, your trust, um, your devotion increases further and further. And that is why um, a certain, a specific deity that is given to you from the guru is very precious, not because there is a difference in the deity. Um, so today I have the excellent opportunity to bestow you in the Tara, the Green Tara Empowerment. And that is a, a very a good opportunity, especially in these days where we experience much difficulty. Um, so, um, so I'm um, myself. So, regarding myself, now we have mentioned there's different um, aeons, different time um, periods where we experience disease and so forth. Actually, I have myself experienced them all. Um, there's nothing I haven't experienced in this world. I have experienced disease and um, famine and weapons and poison, everything. Um, and then there have been uh, eight certain times where Tara actually came to save my life. And this is these were circumstances where I actually reached a point where um, I could not even be protected. But then I was protected. So it was quite amazing, actually, that Tara actually came and really saved my life in a very critical time. <coughs> so... Um, and Tara in general is a deity um, that is widely spread around the world and she's given different names for example in Christianity she is called Mother Mary but basically anyone who um, any female who accomplishes the benefit and happiness of others is really an emanation of Tara because what Tara really is she is love and compassion. She is an enlightened being, so she has already attained enlightenment. She has attained enlightenment because her altruism became very powerful. And it was so strong that she would even forsake her own body, her, her own life force, for the sake of sentient beings. Um, and... So there is no, there was not a single moment of self-grasping in her mind. All she would think about is only sentient beings. So all self-grasping has been cleared away. So the term for Buddha in Tibetan is Sangye, and so Sang is that, Sang is to clear away. Ye, the second syllable, is vast. So then self-grasping self being cleared away, the mind has become vast like space. And even now, when you look at your own mind, without thinking about anything whatsoever, um, and you meditate in a state of Mahamudra, the mind in an instant becomes just like space. It is just when you begin thinking again, the mind becomes solidified again. Um, it happens due to the, the clinging to the true existence of appearances and our ideas, our concepts about them. <clears throat> um, and so that leads then to becoming completely tied up um, in suffering. And often people even commit suicide. So you become like a magnet that um, attracts um, all this negativity, being completely tied up as a bundle um, 
due to self grasping. Um, so again, he, this is where Donglen comes in, thinking about the suffering of others. Um, and then also um, having this in mind, um, recognize that the suffering of self and others all does not exist. So first you think about others and their suffering, but then also think that others don't inherently exist. Um, happiness doesn't exist. Suffering doesn't exist. It's all like an illusion. Um, so realize it is everything, whatever it is, happiness and suffering is an illusion. And so this is what you recognize when you rest within awareness, within the state of Mahamudra. Um, for example, my own Guru Kempo Munzer Rinpoche, he spent 20 years in, in prison, uh, but his entire time he was extremely happy all the time. He was able to um, control the outer circumstance, overpower it. And in his inner mind, he did not experience any suffering at all. And that is due to the holy dharma. Um, and also in my own case, it was Amtara who protected me. So um, this is why now I'm also conferring them Tara empowerment. It is a deity you have a very special um, trust and devotion in. And um, she's considered very um, precious throughout the world, but especially in Tibet, at the time of the King Songtsen Gampo, um, the, the queens who came to be his wives also were emanations of Tara. Um, um, so the queen from China who brought um, the, the Chowa statue was an emanation of white Tara. And so this can actually still be seen, the statue can be seen in Lhasa nowadays. Um, so it is, she's considered to be a very special deity. And it's not just this one Tara, but it is said that there is a hundred million emanations of Tara, just like there are a hundred million emanations of Guru Rinpoche and so forth. The Dharmakaya nature is like space. Um, the enlightened mind is vast like space. And their Sambhogakaya nature, the deity, appears like a rainbow in the sky and is ever present to whoever um, supplicates them. Um, so then they appear like a rainbow in the sky. And then Nirmanakaya is like the raindrops directly falling down and manifesting on this, in this world. Um, so then next we come to reading the historical background on the Green Tara. Hello, oh. Chukchupa, Kapapa Kowara Tini 
Trabalhei, só um pouco de tempo, estava vendo ali. Roma que está bom, não é um dia de tempo, é só um dia de tempo. Só um dia de tempo, só um dia de tempo. Quando eu estou dando um dia, eu estou dando um dia de tempo, eu estou dando um dia de tempo. Tak pun ni cakap tu tu jinping ke luar ni, jadi rumah sendiri jadi rumah res. Jinping ke luar tu yang tengah di zona ni jadi rumah sanjuk sembuh nak zona res. Tu sanjuk sembuh zona tak cukup sanjuk kompak top teras. Oh, siapa yang paru di sana ada? Dia lah semua semua ni. Tapi ni tu ni si kan sedang cukup ni tu. Tapi ni cakap tu ni tu lah. Tuan cuma yole. Tu ni desi cuma milih yole mana? Dia ke tu ni. Sebenarnya macam tu, kalau tak jadi, tak tahu saja kalau macam top top ni orang, tuan tak boleh beli tesis orang. Kalau tuan boleh beli, tuan sangat hijau je, kongsi barang je tu ni, pon hijau je, jenis macam tu, macam je tu, je tu rumah sam, tu ni double duit kerja macam orang boleh. Tapi tuan sam, untuk cek tuan ni sam boleh orang. Tapi ni tu kahwin yang ni lah, kahwin cek ni sam boleh. Tapi mari, ni cek tu tu tuan tu tu ni ni salah tu ni, orang ni ni sam ni tu tak tahu top ni. Nah, ni dia jadi rumah tu jenis tu bermain bola tu, sebab ni lecik cha, cecah semua macam tu. Tapi khusus ni jadi rumah jenis tu kalau kau cakap yang res, dia tahu sangat res. So then now we come to the history of the Green Tara. Um, and so it, this um, empowerment comes from the, um, uh, the 50 empowerments, and it is number 11, the Green Tower Empowerment. Um, and so it says here first, um, Tenrezig is the emanation of the Buddha Amitabha's compassionate means, while Taram is his wisdom emanation. Having vowed to accomplish the benefit of sentient beings for as long as samsara exists, Tenrezig acted for the welfare of sentient beings for countless aeons. Although some were established in the state of liberation, the number of sentient beings did not decrease much. This caused tears to stream from the disheartened sublime one Tenrezig. From these tears, Tara was born, and she said to him, do not despair. I will help you to protect beings tormented by the suffering of samsara. And so regarding, um, now this is now Rinpoche's commentary on this, now regarding this um, commitment, this vow that Tara took, I will protect beings tormented by the suffering of samsara. Um, so on the relative level, um, she took a vow. Um, so in samsara, sentient beings suffer because they cling to the true existence of self and other, a dualistic existence. So therefore, sentient beings experience endless suffering. And so she said, whoever is tormented, whoever suffers in samsara, I will be there to protect them, I will protect them. So this is how it is on the relative level. Um, she appears on a relative level as anyone, any female that has compassion for sentient beings. And for this reason, you should think that any man with great compassion is Tenrezig. And any woman with great compassion, any female with great compassion is actually Tara. So especially nowadays, for example, when we experience this disease in the world, any very courageous doctor and physician, for example, who really helps others um, is really an emanation of Tara or Shinrezig. Or a rich person who is very generous to those who suffer is an emanation of Tara or Shinrezig. So they appear in really limitless ways. So think that all of these compassionate beings are really emanations of Tara or Shinrezig. So this was Tara's aspiration. This was her, her vow and to protect all of those who suffer in samsara. So this is on a relative level. Now on the ultimate level, this line here, I, I will help you to protect beings tormented by the suffering of samsara. It has to do with eliminating self-grasping through the altruistic mind and to recognize that this mind ultimately is Tara. 
she has cultivated um, that mind that has already attained enlightenment. So now you, again and again, give rise to altruism, give rise to um, a mind of bodhicitta. So she has attained enlightenment through this mind of bodhicitta. And she is called, as an enlightened being, the perfection of wisdom and many other names. Um, so, so this is on the on the ultimate level. She, her protection um, is also related to Buddha nature, and there is no being who does not have Buddha nature. And because all beings possess Buddha nature, there is an end to samsara. They all can attain enlightenment. So that's the ultimate point. On the relative level, as we mentioned before, recognize any male with compassion as Chandrasik and any female with compassion as Tara. For example, there's many um, famous people in the world that we hear about. And some people think that, oh, these are just words. But actually, if you really think about the meaning of those words, it, this is not true. They're not just words. This is really how I myself see it. All those uh, nowadays in a time of disease, all those with great courage and compassion for others, I really see them as emanations of Tara and of Chenrezig. So to me, there's really actually countless, there's limitless of these emanations of Tara and Chenrezig. There are those individuals who are actually here, manifestly here and there for us, to help us. So this is how you should think. Uh, Roman Tapoishawa so, so then the, the empowerment text continues. Having offered her support to the noble Chenrezig, Vedrachana composed verses of praise called homage to the 21 Taras. The Tara Deliverance Tantra says, although identical in wisdom, Tara manifests in myriad, uh, myriad ways with different colors and numbers of faces and arms. Acharya Ashwagosha said, Lady Tara, appearing for the benefit of sentient beings, you display your body as Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Uma, Kulchema, Lukugyu, the scowling one, Mamagi, and the white robed lady in order to tame beings according to their needs. Tara is the ground from which all female deities arise. In India, she appeared as Maya Devi, the mother of the Bhagavan, the Buddha Shakyamuni. Furthermore, she manifested as Gilong Mabalmo and the Princess Mandarava. In Tibet, she appeared as the Dakini Yishitsugyal, Machi Lakjan, and many others. So remember she said that this is the concise historical background of this empowerment. Uh, 
ま、ちょっと、え、ちょっと、え、さんにちょっと、その、ちょっと、ロング、ちょっと、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ
ああ、ほんで、ちょうどと、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、と、
We'll offer the short mandala offering on page 18 in the Waitara Sadhana. By virtue of my mental offering of this Buddha field ornamented by Mount Meru, the four continents, and the sun and moon with the ground anointed by fragrant water and strewn with flowers, may all beings delight in the pure realms. Om Guru Deva Dakini Rana Mandala Ahum เอ่อจบตอมกับอยู่เลยเอ่อตารางกันจบปัสสุงุนกันเนี่ยสิจีเลยจบ <laughs> I ตะนาทาตะตงเนเดตะจิเลสาเกยูริสะสิจิราจิทัมจิเกตะตะตงเนตะตงเนมันโบยนาซะจิปะมาเนเดตะตีนิตินิสุโกรยูโดอุปโป
negative karma is a lack of discipline. So now, if you keep just one vow, like the Nina vow for one day, um, do it. Um, so it's an excellent opportunity to practice um, ethical discipline. It's also an excellent opportunity to practice patience. Now, when you think about the suffering and um, all kinds of suffering and um, disease and so on, um, of self and others. So it's not just this disease now, um, but there's always suffering everywhere. Um, the rich suffer from their possessions, the poor suffer from their lack of possessions. There is no one who doesn't suffer, everyone suffers. Um, starting from the president of a country down to all the people in the country, everyone suffers. And they suffer because of self-grasping and their afflictive emotions. Um, so this is therefore also an, an excellent opportunity to practice some um, patience with that. Um, so this, actually this time is an, an incredible opportunity to practice generosity, ethical discipline and patience. We're actually very fortunate um, to be able to increase our practice of virtue in this way. And this is also an excellent opportunity to practice um, meditative concentration. That is, to practice meditation, um, for example, you recite the Medicine Buddha Mantra, or you practice any other deity. At this time, actually, your mantra recitation will become multiplied by many times, and it will benefit um, your own suffering and the suffering of others. So when you think about others, it is mainly an excellent opportunity to practice patience, um, to practice um, ethical discipline, to practice meditative concentration. And for all of that, we need the pyramid of diligence. Um, so when suffering arises, you have to, with a diligent mind, remember the deity, remember the mantra, remember love and compassion. Um, so med meditative concentration means that this is a time where you need to practice meditation. Ideally, you cultivate the four immeasurables and you meditate in a state of Mahamudra, wherein you recognize that it is all illusory. Self and other are illusory. Your body is illusory. The mind does not experience any suffering whatsoever. It remains unaffected by any suffering. It abides just like space. So thinking in this way and resting in the mind of Mahamudra benefits yourself and benefits others. And that is the perfection, the parameter of wisdom. So this is really an incredible opportunity for us to practice the six parameters in this way. So this is what we also mean with, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. So meditate at this time, practice, um, study and learn. Um, do not waste this opportunity. Roma. <laughs> So now for receiving the empowerment, um, visualize uh, in space the, in, in, in the center of the mandala, the principal deity, which is Tara, surrounded by the retinue and actually the ones who are receiving the empowerment are included within the retinue. So think that um, we are all the retinue of the deity. And that is because when you receive the empowerment now, you have a wish that I'm receiving this empowerment so that I can benefit all sentient beings. I'm doing this for the sake of all sentient beings in the entire world. And with this intention, you become really a retinue of the deity. The retinue consists of bodhisattvas only. 
So having a wish to benefit others, um, think that you all are the retinue of the deity. Kwanji. Ye ye. Pongboji. Sipa. Kolo. Namjongwa. Tereng. Sipa. Renjinji. Stovo. Bala. Kardito. Kardito. Then repeat in English, embodiment of omniscient wisdom, principal deity, through your kindness, please grant me the precious treasure you are setting forth today that utterly purifies the wheel of existence. Oh, Lama Tang de Jija Satonam Jatong the Japs and Roshan, the Pashapa Tang, Giwala, Jisa Yerama Tang, Tatu to Sibjiba Tang Giva Tawa, Dodam, the Moa, the Jinang, the Mundo, Jibja, Nanda, Jiva said, they did not want you. So then next, please repeat the following five um, pure branches in the presence of the Guru and the um, assembly of deities. And these five branches consist of taking refuge, rejoicing, confession of negativities, cultivating the mind of bodhicitta, and dedicating the roots of virtue toward enlightenment. The one Nankala, then one swati, last day, so in Bagre, the use of the Saji, Tom, the Nakri, Kachar, Nako, Timon, Yo, Yo, Ozi. There's a Sakang Gochi on the Tang to saw a double thousand the same way. Sakang Gochi, Juche, by Yo, Yo, some dead son. There is also Kadiso Atanatini, uh, Sukchibo Chang, your Trisrapsibo, your name, and also a Tabi Yori, so I must have the Yomari, Timari. So now, when we receive the empowerment, it is said we should visualize in the space before us the, the principal deity of the empowerment, surrounded by all the Buddhas of the three times gathering around like clouds and pervading space. And so now when we, when we supplicate, it is just like we are opening the temple doors so we can see the inside of the temple. But actually, those deities are already there. They are here continuously. It is just that when we supplicate them, when we supplicate them, our mind, we gain courage and strength of mind and we receive great blessings. Um, so it's, it's not that um, it makes no, um, like, no difference whether or not we supplicate. Um, so you might think that. But um, so the difference is just that they are actually already there. It is just that when we supplicate and we recognize them, the Dharmakaya and Zambogakayas are always continuously there, but when we supplicate, it's like we are opening the, the temple door. So this is how you should think about it. Mm. <laughs> So, 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 
In English, I take refuge in the three jewels and confess all evil and unvirtuous deeds. I rejoice in the virtues of beings and hold the Buddha's awakening in mind until attaining awakening I take refuge in the Buddha the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly in order to fully accomplish the purpose of others and myself I give rise to Bodhicitta having given rise to the mind of supreme awakening I welcome all sentient beings I will practice the supreme bodhisattva conduct that is pleasing to all may I attain buddhahood for the benefit of all beings お、たすかんすんせんじんたんしらたんえぴんごさんぼろきちまちちまたでにらんがせんていげたんじゃくてらんじょそんさんてたんいてそんそんでごんすりえいげじゃいいぽえかれんでかれたんしぶらじてか
엄마 아이야 다리잖아 아비자야 아아 아들이 남칸이 집들이 막 가다리 이거 아들이 자충 차바바바는 이제 늙게 탐지를 탐성 지내더니 여기 땀당 오마 홍지를 탐성 쏜 들이들이 곰 때문에 섬뜩이 들이 여기 땀을 때 모두 고래 돼. 나 so then think that from space um, um, forms of haram um, like rainbows um, descend down and dissolve into you and all beings and then syllables of tam and amahum also dissolve into you or just continue to focus single pointedly on the tam ジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャンジャン
So now think that from space come the five Iyani Buddhas with consorts to confer the empowerment. And so they appear as inconceivable gods and goddesses, each holding empowerment vases in their hands and um, appearing in as many forms as there are disciples. And so then above the crown of um, all the disciples, they pour the nectar into their crown, into their central channel, which is open, um, just like a bell. And to think that the nectar enters your body in this way um, and completely um, fills your body and leaves through your pores to the outside and your body has become like a rainbow. I Mm Sajipe Um, being thus initiated, karmic imprints and defilements accumulated with the body and all grasping at them are purified. You have received a complete form empowerment. You are now empowered to practice the stages of development of visualizing your body as the deity, the union of appearance and emptiness. As a result, you will have the fortune to accomplish the Nirmanakaya. Tongue <laughs> Then in order to receive the speech empowerment, please repeat, Vajra Holder, please heed me, for the benefit of beings, please grant me the great wisdom of the mantra empowerment which is the source of all accomplishments. Oh, ah, Hey, 
เปลนะตาเจ๋อจังเลยตกว่าพาตาโดเสียเจ๋อเลยตรีเอ่อกระดูกดิจิตกว่าชีวะพาตาชุดตรีสานชุดชุดเจ๋อเลยดาจิพา
on the basis of ordinary words, that is a sign that the speech obscurations have become purified. Um, and so that is then the meaning of the speech empowerment. And so also the mantra recitation has the same um, great benefits of the prayer wheel. In general, it is explained that there are nine benefits to the mantra. Uh, for example, the mantra is the deity. The mantra also is an offering. It is also a purification of obscurations. It is a blessing. It represents the mandala and so forth. Um, so um, the, the mantra recitation, it is, we have just repeated this here. Um, it grants the greater um, wisdom, greater, is a source of great accomplishment. It is like a wish fulfilling jewel. Um, everything good in this and future lives is accomplished actually through the mantra. Um, and actually, we always, I always mention this, um, so you should listen to those teachings um, that I explained before well. Um, so you listen to that well. And so there's actually two parts to the mantra. One is the actual verbal recitation of the mantra. And the second is the mental visualization of the mantra garland. And so with regard to that, um, you visualize the mantra garland and your speech remains silent and you visualize. So you go through different stages of approach and accomplishment. First, there's the approach, and so you begin to visualize the mantra garland only. And then once you have that, you begin to rotate it slowly for at first. And then gradually it accelerates, and it becomes so fast, as fast as the engine of an airplane. And it becomes imperceptible, but it gives off a natural sound of the mantra. And this is where then the practice of sending out light rays and gathering them back um, begins. And when you're able to, to, to engage in this practice, it is a sign that you are purifying obscurations. So we go through the approach, then the close approach, then the accomplishment, then the great accomplishment. And these four stages are um, stages where whereby we gradually purify the obscurations of our mind until it becomes um, pervasive like space. It becomes pervasive like space through the mantra. Um, and you know, the benefit of the mantra is the same as the mantra garland or the mantra wheel, the prayer wheel. Um, so therefore, it is the source of all accomplishments. Um, through the mantra, you can see the ultimate truth. Through the mantra, you can realize the non-duality of self and others. You realize primordial awareness, all through the mantra. Sangwajoriti so then for the visualization, so in the text it says that um, the, no, from the Vajramastra, the mantra garland emerges from the Vajramastra's mouth and so on. But actually um, what really happens is that the mantra syllables fall down from the sky like rain falling down and the mantra syllables all descend with a, so a sound. So they all have a sound when they descend. And then when you repeat the mantra, um, think that uh, you have received one mantra garland, which then circles around the dam. So you have received then um, dare, dare, dure, so. um, 
as representing um, the eight emanations of Tara that protect um, from all fear. So visualize it turning just like in a prayer wheel and uh, visualize this continuously whenever you recite the mantra, think that it spins there like this prayer wheel representing this, um, th these eight syllables representing the eight forms or emanations of Tara. And in the center with the syllable Dham, you have the principal form of Tara. On tare tu tare tare so, 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 on tare tu tare tare so. John D. John D. Dagi, Zong Lati, Dala, Nyewar, Zedo, so don't they in the lot of life? Then I'm what it is all. I don't go to the Naja to Joseph Martel, Toledo Bordeta, so on the Catina Medaya, so Uh, so then, then repeat, conqueror, as I have become your disciple, please take me under your care. Oh, Sati, darling, you are dead, so to Kati, a dear Sati, a young Bodina. There Same <laughs> The <laughs> Lanko Um, so you have just said, um, like, take me under your care here. And so now when you recite the mantra for a long period of time and you have the deity in your mind, um, actually the benefit of that is also accomplished by spinning a prayer wheel. It is that that spinning a prayer wheel actually completes the virtues of body, speech, and mind. Um, so now some people, when they spin a prayer wheel, they spin it really fast. Uh, but that's actually not so good for your body. It harms your body. Um, so turn it um, slowly and consciously with your body. And with your speech, if you do that, um, the mantra, um, mantra rec recitation, mantra comes from that. Mantra power comes from that. 
and with your mind you're naturally single pointed as you're spinning the wheel so you're naturally abiding in a state of meditative concentration of calm abiding so therefore we say that within the spinning of a prayer wheel the virtues of body speech and mind are complete and that is why it is also said the mantra is a wish fulfilling jewel so um, understand the qualities and the benefits of that um, it is very precious um, also at the time um, when you go to sleep in the evening um, if you have your prayer with you and you are um, used to spinning it then you might even um, be able to begin to dream about the prayer wheel and then at the time of death for example it is said you should have your prayer wheel at your pillow above your head so then your awareness goes there and you know that my prayer wheel is there at my pillow and it is said that if that enough is actually enough uh, for the consciousness to transfer and there is no other power practice that is necessary the wheel itself becomes your poem and it opens your central channel because you think the wheel is right there above my head and this actually naturally opens your central channel so the spinning of a prayer wheel is a very easy activity but it is very meaningful and um, also sometimes people spin very large big prayer wheels um, but that's not advisable because then you can't always turn it so sometimes also people spin the very heavy ones with made out of gold and that's just really very troublesome so try to spin a very small kind of convenient prayer wheel that you can really spin all the time continuously there is a great benefit coming from that <clears throat> so the spinning of the prayer wheel completes the virtues of body speech and mind and also the benefit of the mantra garland which is that it is like a wish fulfilling jewel ちょっとポトンとベテレレ。そう、で、だ、実は名前。あ、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、
这里是一个人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人
there is endless suffering in samsara because we grasp at the reality of things which causes the mind to be like an ice block um, recognize that it all is like a dream all suffering is like a dream when you see the nature of the mind um, so then you recognize that for instance there was the, the first or second world war and now it's over there was suffering but it's gone and so in a similar way everything goes away like that and eventually you die and when you die it's just the body that dies the mind cannot die and therefore karma is most important because the mind cannot die you have to bring with you after death a mind of bodhicitta and if you uh, take that with you then the happiness of the higher realms and the pure lands will manifest but if you follow your afflictive emotions then suffering just like now will manifest so follow um, bodhicitta and train your mind in being able to abide in the space like nature um, so this is the, the meaning of these words here um, realize the meaning the nature of mind which transcends birth and death uh, ทุกวันสิบาทเส้นเดบนตอกะมาปะมาตอกมาจิติจิบาลเส้นซอมาตาจังซอมตอจิตตองเบเส้นเดนักตาวิชาติยอยูมีกายมาซอมปะนิติส
So next we come to the mind empowerment and you will hear uh, the sound. I will give us um, a sound and um, like a bell ring. And the meaning of that is that now during the mind empowerment, um, the um, when you hear that sound, um, all past thoughts stop and no future thoughts are, have arisen. And so in between those thoughts, there is the um, completely clear, clean nature of the mind without a single thought. And that mind is like space. So don't think about um, this or that. Um, just rest within that state, and that state is the state of Mahamudra. In the Mahamudra teachings, it says, um, without thinking about anything whatsoever, um, look at the nature of the mind. So don't think about anything whatsoever and look at the mind. And so then there will be this moment where all thinking stops. And this is the true nature of the mind. It is just like space. Um, so first, recognize that the omniscient Lord Long Chen Rapcham had said, um, there is no higher learning than to realize the nature of your mind. So um, if you, even if you have, do not have much learning, but if you have realized the nature of the mind, you are the greatest Dharma practitioner. On the other hand, not seeing the nature of the mind, then you still have a way to go. That you should recognize. Um, so there are many um, different terms that we use in terms of what needs to be recognized. And there's even more when it comes, even more terms when it comes to what we do not recognize. Um, but um, in brief, um, do not grasp at anything whatsoever. Um, so we speak about the, those views of Mahamudra and Dzogchen and Madhyamaka. And regarding that, um, Lord Chikten Sungern has said that when you, when the, when you remain, when the, when the three great ones, which is now Mahamudra, Dzogchen, and Madhyamaka, when, they, when the three great ones remain untouched, um, that is the supreme realization. Or Milarepa put it simply, and he said, recognize your ordinary awareness, your ordinary consciousness. And that is actually quite easy to recognize. It's just the natural state of your mind. So that is what is meant with there is no higher learning than to recognize the nature of your mind. So at this point, we, we meditate for a short while. And when you meditate, all of the, all those of you who are familiar with the natural state, um, just um, rest within the natural state that is beyond birth and death um, for some time. Um, and so at that time, um, you recognize that this state transcends all suffering. So then later on, whenever you experience difficulties and suffering, then come back to that state and remain within the natural state of the mind. And you recognize that all of these problems are just fleeting, temporary, and they um, don't really affect your mind. Um, so now some people, um, there's a few people who trust me, although I am I'm quite a fool and I don't know much, I don't have a lot of good qualities, but still um, people trust me, so I act as your Vajra Master to confer the empowerment. Um, so, but here it says that the mind transcends birth and death. So even though I don't have many qualities, I do actually not experience a lot of fear of, 
of death. And the reason why I don't fear death is because I know, um, for example, when um, when I lack bodhicitta and I follow my afflictive emotions, then that manifests in my dreams. So I know that my experiences are the reflection of my own afflictive emotions. Um, and if I only hold on to love and a pure mind, then that is enough. That's all I need to do. And I fully trust that that alone will lead to the appearance of the pure lands. And likewise, I have understood that if I follow the afflictive emotions, I will experience a lot of difficulties. So by all means, I hold on to love. So that is like a wishful feeling jewel. Um, and of course, now we speak about the ultimate truth, the true nature of the mind, there's even more to be understood. But it is for us sufficient to just have this wish to benefit all sentient beings. And what I have understood is that if I only hold on to that and never separate from that, then there will be no self-grasping. And all karmas and all habitual imprints arise out of self-grasping. Um, so um, whatever arises, though, lacks any true inherent existence. And so because this is a point that I have understood, I do not experience fear of death. Um, I recognize that all suffering is the natural reflection of the afflictive emotions in the mind. And now when the mind becomes um, pure, free of afflictive emotions, then just naturally the pure lens will become manifest. Um, so this, um, um, this all like points to us, our need to meditate. Um, what we need to cultivate is meditation in order that we can realize this, so that we can realize the nature of the mind. Jesus, 
So now with the first sounding of the bell, all thoughts have ceased. And so together with the ceasing of the sound, all thoughts cease. And you come to abide in the thought-free natural state of the mind, abiding like space. Um, Lord Milarepa had said, when you realize that um, mind is indivisible from space, you have actualized the Dharmakaya. So this is the time, this is the time where you see directly Samantabhadra and Vajradhara, the space-like nature of the mind. So space merges with the mind. And normally when we practice a sadhana, there is a completion stage. And at that point, we also ring the bell. And so then with the second sounding of the bell during the completion stage, with the second sounding of the bell, you again arise. And what arises is the seed syllable of the deity arising in an instant. So with the second sounding of the bell, in an instant, bring back to mind the syllable dham, and then sustain awareness of it throughout all your daily activities. Always keep in mind the seed syllable. And whenever you remember the dham, Tara is actually there. So therefore, to remember it is very important. Yeah, so at this point, um, we are taking a precious pill, like a money pill. So you can now take one, the, any money pill that you have at home yourself. So eat one of those pills. Mm being thus initiated, karmic imprints and defilements accumulated with the mind and all grasping at them are purified. You have received the complete mind empowerment. You are now empowered to meditate on the nature of the deity's mind, the union of clarity and emptiness. As a result, you will have the fortune to accomplish the Dharmakaya. Oh,那到底他们都是啥个西瓜烧的有的,都得能看到你差的有的。他第一个哈国产的,啥个地点的,啥个地点的都有的,他们他们地点的都有的。他那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个
so there may be hundreds and thousands of deities, but since they're all wisdom beings, all the deities are complete within a single deity. And I always mention that to you. And that is because the mind of all the deities is one and the same. It is that within the expanse of primordial wisdom, all the Buddhas are one. And so how are they one? They are one in being clear and empty, their mind being clear and empty. So here in the empowerment we said, you're empowered to meditate on the nature of the deity's mind, the union of clarity and emptiness. So what is clarity? Clarity is the clear awareness that is aware of the thought-free mind. You know that there is not a single thought in the mind. There is awareness. And emptiness means that the mind is just becomes just like space. So if you, once you have understood just these two words, just these two um, terms, within that, within clarity and emptiness, all the Buddhas are contained. Within that, all the views are contained. So this is what it means to realize the true nature of the mind. And if you continue to abide within this state, all the enlightened qualities arise from this, from this state of clarity and emptiness. And this state of clarity and emptiness, even if arising for a moment, is the very essence of Mahamudra and Dzogchen. So cultivate it, meditate on it again and again. Mm Dala so this completes the empowerment and so now please repeat the Samaya. All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas residing in the ten directions, please heed me, Master, please heed me from today onwards until attaining the heart of enlightenment. I, who am called and say a name, will take up the exalted deity Bhagavati Tara as Mayidam and will recite her mantra daily to whatever extent I am able. Okay. So now here we say that I am going to practice 
this empowerment deity until attaining enlightenment. And of course, there is countless deities, and yet they all have the same mind of emptiness and compassion. And therefore, if you cultivate this mind, if you practice this mind, then actually you're practicing the Samaya of hundreds and thousands of deities, of all the deities. So Dasamaya is the twofold bodhicitta. And for those for whom it is difficult to recognize this, just do not separate from a wish to benefit sentient beings. Actually, within this mind of bodhicitta, the root samayas of hundreds of empowerments is complete. So this root samaya is most important. Um, please keep it in mind. The root samaya is to cultivate the twofold bodhicitta. And that also is the enlightened mind of all the deities. That is their life force. So this completes the empowerment. We have received the empowerment. And that's it, Alec. Prabhu, 22. Only a little bit. Oh, uh-huh. 
थैंक यू